The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by The Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. We take you now to Summerfield, home of that prominent figure and humble servant of the people, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, who is to be found this morning, as every morning, seated at the breakfast table, fortifying himself for the day's work ahead. Leroy, if I might trouble you again for the marmalade. Marmalade coming through. Heads up, Marge. Uncle Mort, it's loaded with sugar. I know that. I shouldn't really be eating any, but just a smidgen to finish off my toast. I suppose now you want another piece of toast. Well, one piece, perhaps, to go with my marmalade. <laughs> there goes another New Year's resolution. Oh, I can get into fighting trim very quickly, my dear, once I put my mind to it. Uh, yes, Bertie? Shall I pour you a second cup, or you want to give me an argument first? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I shouldn't, but just a small one, Bertie. You know, just to... Uh... I know, just to wash down the toast and marmalade. <laughs> <laughs> Say when. You know, when it comes to breakfast, Bertie, I'm afraid you spoil me. Don't take no help from me. Oh, that's enough. My gracious, you poured me a full cup there, Bertie. I said say when. Well, as long as you poured it, wouldn't do to waste any, would it? <laughs> <laughs> but beginning tomorrow, Bertie, one cup only. One cup. Every blessed morning we go through this. No, my dear, I don't think that's quite fair. It's true, isn't it? Well, I get hungry. Hey, you... Where? Where is it? The toast is burning, Marge. Oh, oh, my goodness. Why didn't you say so instead of screaming like a maniac? My mouth was full. Yes. Well, don't frighten us to death. <coughs> Better open the window there, Bertie. Yes, sir. That's enough. Close it. <laughs> open the window. Close the window. Is this too well done for you, Unky? Well done. It's burnt to a crisp. Okay, I'll make you another piece. Don't trouble yourself, my dear. Seems I can't eat even a piece of thin, dry toast without general disapproval around here. Seems I'm to be denied even a crust of bread. <laughs> Don't bother to make me another piece, my dear. I couldn't eat it. It would turn to ashes in my mouth, if not before. <laughs> now stop carrying on. It's already in the toaster. Yeah, but you haven't turned it on. Oh, there. I could starve for all anybody seems to care. But don't mind me. I'm nobody. You just pay the bills around here. You darn right. <laughs> uh, doorbell, Bertie. Hi. Wonder who that is. Hooker? Oh, 20 to 9. Have to gulp my coffee and get down to the office. You better get a move on, too, kids. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Vance. Do take Mr. Gildersleeve back to the office. I'll just stop to see him for a minute. No, he ain't took off yet. Just come right in. Leela, that you? Hello, Throckmorton. <laughs> well. Oh, don't get up, please. On your feet, Leroy. Oh, hi, Mrs. Randall. Hello, Leroy, Marjorie, honey. Oh, look out, look out, Marjorie. Oh, the toast. Fire! Oh, my goodness, again. Look at that. Will somebody please take the responsibility of watching the toast? I'm sorry, Unky. I guess my mind was somewhere else. Your mind is always somewhere else. If you could just find out where it is and move there. <laughs> oh, now, don't be a cross, Patch Rockmore. Well, I'm sorry about this, Leela, but the way things have been going here this morning, I've hardly been able to get a bite to eat. Ah! Leroy, <laughs> you're already late for school. Holy cats, he's right. Come on, Mark. I love the color of your nail polish. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you, Marjorie. Ruth did me this time. I couldn't get there. Yes, yes. Come on, don't be. Okay. You've been avoiding me lately, Throckmorton, haven't you? Uh, avoiding you? Yes, you have. Now, fesh up. I haven't seen you in days. Well, I've been busy at the office. I tried to call you last night, and you weren't in there either. Well, last night I was uh, doing something else. <laughs> You see, uh, Oh, it doesn't matter in the least. I just wanted to tell you that you'd better start being a little bit nice to me now because I'm coming into money. 
Money? Mm. I'm on my way downtown right this minute to try on a Persian lamb coat. Oh, Throckmorton, I'm so excited. I wasn't going to tell anybody till it happened, but I just can't help it. Well, wait a minute. Where's this money coming from? Well, that's the thing. I was thinking about that. It could be Andy Pooh. She isn't so terribly old, but she married real well. I just hate to have a go, of course, but we all have to go sometime, don't we? And, uh... <laughs> I always was her favorite niece. Leela, I don't understand this. Where did you get the idea that you were coming into money? Oh, gracious. I didn't tell you about Mr. Sartorius. Star what? What? <laughs> Sartorius. Sartorius? Mm -hmm. Who's he? Oh, well, he's just wonderful. Everybody who's been to him says so. Uh, Grace Pettibone, she went to him, and the things he told her, well, she said it was simply uncanny. What does the man do? He tells you things that are going to happen. You mean he's a mind reader, a fortune teller? Oh, gracious, no, nothing like that. Well, I wondered. This man reads your palm. Oh, brother. <laughs> oh, but he, he's really wonderful. Well, how do you know? Because he told me I was coming into money, definitely. Within three months, you will come into a sum of money. That's what he said. And that in itself is uncanny because I was just wishing I had some money. <laughs> but Leela... Oh, uh, and that's not all. He told Grace Pettibone her son was going to be discharged from the army, and he was last week. <laughs> of course he was. The war's over. They're all going to be discharged sooner or later. It doesn't take a mind reader to guess that. I knew what you'd say, Throckmorton. You're so conservative. That's why you've never gotten any wire. Oh. Oh, but you see. When I'm wearing my new Persian lime and driving around town in my new blue convertible, you wish you'd listen. Convertible? Leela, you didn't put any money down. I'm having a demonstration this afternoon. Look, Leela, do me a favor. You don't have to listen to anything I say. But before you get in any deeper, talk this over with Judge Hooker. Horace? <laughs> Gracious, he's worse than you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll hold the phone. If we don't put a stop to this judge, we'll wind up having to bail Leela out. Quiet. How can I telephone? You know how she gets around you. She spends money, and it's us who'll pay. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. No, no, never mind. Well, well what do he say? The chief isn't there. He's down at the barbershop. Yeah, the chief is never there. If this town had any kind of a police department, Horace, a man like this palm reader couldn't even open up shop. They'd run him right out of town. Oh, it's not quite as simple as that, my friend. Under the law, a man is presumed to be innocent until proven guilty. But the man is a faker. Possibly so. But can we prove it? Is there any evidence to that effect? I just told you. I know. The man is a faker. That is an assertion. It is not evidence. It's a fact. That's what it is. But how do we know? I just told you twice. <laughs> Gildy, I say again, that is an assertion. And merely repeating it does not lend it weight. Look, Judge, the man is a faker. You know it and I know it. Well, don't we? To the best of our knowledge and belief. Stop hedging. He's a faker. All right, let's get him out of town. Gildy, these things can't be done overnight. The law has its delays, and wisely so. Oh, you lawyers make me sick. A palm reader and he's got you buffaloed. Why, before you and the chief get moving, well, it wouldn't surprise me to see the city hall taken over by gypsies. <laughs> Hello, Floyd. Where's the chief? Is that... I'm here, right under the towel. Well, unveil him. I want to talk to him. That you, Commissioner? Well, hello there. Come on, sit up. I got something I want to say to you. Anything you can't say to me laying down? Yes, you've been laying down on the job altogether too much lately. Now, Commissioner, is that nice? Hoist me, Floyd. There you are. Uh, what's the beef, Commissioner? Gates, this town is full of racketeers. Well, that's news to me. You bet it's news to you. You don't know half of what's going on around here. Now, Commissioner, do I tell you how to run the water department? Somebody better. Only joking, Commissioner. <laughs> you stay out of this, Floyd. If you ask me, Commissioner, the department has a pretty good record this past year. A pretty good record. That's telling them, Chief. Yeah. We made more arrests than any previous year except two. I know. Illegal parking. Yeah. There isn't a legal place to park in the whole city. <laughs> That's telling them, Commissioner. 
Listen, it. what is it that you're after, anyway? There's a fellow I want run out of town. Well, we'll certainly tend to that, Commissioner. <laughs> yes, sir, right away. Is there any particular reason, or do you just not like the guy? The man's a crook, a faker. He calls himself a palm reader. But if you ask me, he's running some kind of a confidence game. And if you were on the job instead of lying here getting your fat face massaged... <laughs> Commissioner, let's not be calling names, shall we? That can only lead to nothing but hard feeling. Well, confound it, why aren't you doing something about it? Now, don't you worry. We have our eye on all these fellas. We're watching them. Yeah, and while you watch them, they're swindling innocent women. On State Street, in broad daylight. Anybody we know? Mrs. Ransom, for one. Oh. Say, how's she been lately? I haven't seen you and her, uh... She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this fellow's on State Street, you say, this palm reader? I thought you had your eye on him. He's next to the candy store there. Next to the candy store, eh? Oh, it's very interesting. I don't know what's so interesting about it. Well, we put these things together. We have our methods. If you think he's going to tunnel into the candy store and break into the jujubees, you're crazy. <laughs> that isn't his racket. Well, what is his racket? I don't know. Why don't you put a cop on him and find out? Well, I'm kind of shorthanded at the moment. There's only one man I could put on the case, and I've got him guarding an excavation. Who's going to steal an excavation? <laughs> Mayor's orders. He's afraid somebody will fall in and sue the city. Well, of all the crooks and hoodlums all over the place, and the only able-bodied cop in town is standing in a mud hole. <laughs> you run your department like a flatfoot. Like a... Commissioner, that's a word I take exception to. Well, that's all you are, a typical flatfoot. If I couldn't run the department better than all that... All right, if you know so much, why don't you go out and get the evidence on this guy? Why, George, I could. But... All right, all right, go ahead. You bring us the evidence, and we'll put that guy in the jug so fast his head'll spin. Yeah, Commissioner, why don't you? Well, suppose he suspected I was up to something. Oh, you got nothing to worry about. He'd never take you for anything but a politician. Come to shake him down, maybe. Oh, thank you, Floyd Munson. I don't know that I'm crazy about going there alone, though. Suppose the fellow was armed. Floyd will go with you. Oh, well, hold on now. I don't know. I got the shop here. Well, make your deputies, both of you. Then you'll have the law behind you. Deputies? Well, can you do that? Can I? Huh. Raise your right hand. Yeah. You too, Floyd. Okay. You do solemnly swear to uphold the laws of Chartered City, Summerfield, to help you? It's done. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, Latin? You mean we're deputies? You're deputies. Well, what do you know? Where's the badge? Where's... Well, here. Here, I'll lend you mine. But don't lose it. I'll pin it on my chest. <sighs> there. <laughs> How do I look? Well, I'll be darned. Now you look exactly like a flatfoot. Oh! <laughs> the great Gilder's sleeve will be back in a few moments. You know, on work days, most of us don't find time to thoroughly enjoy breakfast. In our house, for example, there always seems to be a mad scramble. At our house, too, Mr. Lang. But I try to see that my family gets a proper start for the day by selecting foods which provide plenty of nourishment. And, as most women know, the spread you serve with bread and hot toast is one of the most nourishing foods on your breakfast menu. Millions of women have found that parquet margarine has both the nourishment and flavor that satisfies early morning appetites. Well, parquet's flavor is certainly delicious when it's melting into piping hot toast. Yes, on toast, pancakes, or waffles, parquet is still unmatched for flavor. And parquet margarine is one of the best energy foods you can buy. It's made from wholesome, highly refined vegetable oils. And to help produce that sweet, dairy-like flavor for which parquet is famous... Kraft blends in freshly pasteurized, cultured skim milk. So, even if you do have to hurry through breakfast, make it a good nourishing one by including delicious, economical parquet margarine. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> Summerfield from the depredations of Sartorius the palm reader, he has organized a private safari to smoke him out. The expedition consists of Gildersleeve and Floyd Munson, whom we pick up now as they approach the Swami's place of business. Well, what do we do now, Commissioner? We go in. What do you think? 
Sure. Okay. Sure, let's go in. I will admit, I, I don't like them black curtains in the window. Anything could go on behind a curtain like that. That silly black curtain is part of the show. This fellow is in business, Floyd. He's got to treat us like any other suckers. Well, take that badge off your vest. It's sticking out. Oh, I thought it might scare him a little. If he thinks you're a cop, he'll shoot you. Stick it in your back pocket. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on. All right. I guess we can handle them between us. There won't be anything to handle. Don't worry. Gee, he's got one of those bells when you open the door. It's like Peavy. Yeah, but where is everybody? Shh. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. <laughs> you wish a reading from Sartorius? Uh, yes, we do. Well, if you will kindly be seated, I will ask the master to see you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. I know what you're thinking, Floyd, but don't say it. I bet you were thinking the same thing, wasn't you, Commissioner? Maybe I was, maybe I wasn't. Kindly remember what we're here for. Oh, I know. She's just part of the act. Well, I'll let a dame like that read my tea leaves any day. <laughs> Shh, shut up. Here comes somebody. Gentlemen, Sartorius greets you. Sartorius welcomes you. Sartorius awaits your pleasure. Well, uh, we just want a reading, if that's what you call it, my friend and I. You both wish reading? Yeah, both of us. Two bucks a piece, is that right? Sartorius's fee is two dollars for a complete reading of the palm past, present, and future. Uh, paid in advance? And that is Sartorius's policy. It's... Well, here's five dollars for both of us. You got change? Sartorius never carries money. Oh. Kalinga! Kalinga! Yes, master? The gentleman offers money. Yeah. Can you change a five, miss? I want to pay for both of us. Thank you. Here's a dollar. Uh, thank you. Well, go ahead, Floyd. Okay. Can you work on me right here, Doc? I don't care if my friend hears whatever you say. Very well. Kalinga, the light, please. Yes, master? And the music. Yes, master. And now, sir, your hand. Shoot. Oh, no, 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 no. The right hand. Oh. The left hand is the hand of birth, the unwritten scroll. The right is the hand of development. The right hand shows what we have made of ourselves, how we have used our opportunities. Gee, I never knew that. Did you ever know that, Mr. Gibbs? quiet, Floyd. Let's get on with it. Hmm. A very interesting hand, sir. You must do some kind of highly skilled work. A dentist? A doctor? No, but you're close. Sartorius will now examine the lifeline. Long and full. Long and full. Uh, you were seriously ill when you were about 15? Well, not so very serious. Chicken pox. <laughs> it may have been more serious than you think. Still, you will live a long time. Oh, gee, that's good. Will I make any money? You will prosper steadily. You will continue in your present profession. Uh, you are married, are you not? Yep. All right, 12 years. Mm. Uh, does the name Tootsie mean anything to you? Nope. Curious. There's something about your hand that suggests the name Tootsie. Hey, wait a minute. When I and the wife started going together, I called her Tootsie. Well, what do you know? Then your wife will be the only woman in your life. Yeah? Oh, well... <laughs> That is all, sir. Sartorius has spoken. That's all? Boy, that's a fast two dollars. Sartorius has spoken. Now the other gentleman, please. Uh, get up, Floyd. Get up. Move over. It's my turn. Yeah. Uh, right hand? Yes. The right hand is the hand of development. The right hand shows what we have made of yeah, ourselves. Yes, I heard all that. Go on with the reading. Sartorius will read the past, the present, and the future. Sartorius will... No, no. Stop the music. <laughs> What's the matter? Sartorius will be unable to read the gentleman's palm. Unable? Why? There are some things man must not know. <laughs> but, but 
What is it you don't want to tell me? If Kalinga. You... Yes, master? Return the gentleman's fee, please. Now, wait a minute. Are you trying to scare me? Sartorius has spoken. Your two dollars, sir. Yeah, but I... Good day, gentlemen. The door, Kalinga. Good day, gentlemen. So long. Wait a minute. I've got a right... Oh! Mm. Ain't no use, Commissioner. They locked us out. Come on, let's get out of here. All right, but by George now, I'm convinced he's a swindler. Well, I ain't so sure now. He's crooked. Why didn't he take your two dollars? Too smart. He knew I was someone important, and he didn't dare. No, no, he was going to read your hand, but then he looked at it, and it stopped them cold. But why? I don't know. I heard of cases where they won't read your hand because you're going to... Well, because something's going to happen to you. Something going to happen? Yeah, like I knew, what? I knew a fellow they wouldn't read his hand. Next day, he fell out of an eight-story window, broke both legs and his neck. Kill him? You said it. <laughs> well, I don't care. This fellow Sartorius is nothing but a faker. Yeah? He knew I had chicken pox. No, he didn't. You told him. Well, what about Tootsie? Can't get around that. He could have heard about that. Not a chance. I ain't thought of the name in ten years. <laughs> don't exactly fit her anymore, you know. <laughs> Well, it's still no miracle. Tootsie's one of the commonest nicknames there is. Everybody that ever lived had a, well, he knew a girl named Tootsie. Have you? No. All right, then. Let's give credit where credit is due. The guy's a pretty fair fortune teller. I should have known better than to take you on a scientific investigation like this. You're stupid, ignorant, and superstitious. Superstitious? Commissioner, I think that's going a little far. All right, think it. From now on, I'll handle this thing myself. <laughs> What can I do you for this evening? Joke me no jokes, Peavy. I'm not in the mood. How about a nice cherry phosphate? Great pepper up they tell me. Take more than a cherry phosphate to help me. I've been trying to save the community, Peavy, and the community doesn't want to be saved. Well, that's the way of the world, Mr. Gildersleeve. What particular reform have you been working on? I've been trying to run a swindler out of town, that's all. And I get no cooperation from the courts, no cooperation from the police department, no help from anybody. Who's the swindler? Anybody I know? Well, you may have heard of him. This fellow calls himself Sartorius. Claims to be a palm reader. Oh, Mrs. Peavy spoke of him just yesterday. Well, I hope she hasn't gone to consult him. Don't let her go near him, Peavy. Why? The man's a common swindler. Nobody can predict the future you know darn well. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Peavy, there's no such thing as being, well, too open-minded. Now, I know you believe there are two sides to every question. That's me. But on some questions, intelligent people ought to agree. Now, surely you're not superstitious. No, no, no. I mean supernatural stuff. Palm reading, telling fortunes with cards, crystal ball gazers, and so on. You don't believe in that kind of stuff, do you? Well, I wouldn't say I believe in it, no. On the other hand... On the other hand, she had warts. <laughs> I tell you, Peavy, there are no two sides to this question. Are there? Well, if you don't want to hear what I was going to say... Well, not I... if it's some supernatural theory. No theory, Mr. Gildersleeve, just fact. Now, my cousin married a woman that claimed she had the gift of second sight. She claimed she had it. So what? What if I claim I can fly? Nobody'd believe it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't want to hear what my cousin's wife did one time, just say so. I'm not one of these fellows that likes to talk just to hear himself talk, you know. I'm sorry, Petey. Go ahead. Tell me about your cousin's wife. Well, one day she went on a little trip. And coming home, all of a sudden, she had this vision. She saw her husband drowning. My cousin. What do you mean? She saw him drowning? Just like a picture, she said. There he was in the water going down for the third time. So she rushed home, and when she got there, what do you think she found? He was washing his hands. He was washing the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was. <laughs> Forget it, Peavy. You know, when I came in here, I was a little worried. I'll admit that. I went to see this fellow Sartorius, thinking to get some evidence against him, and he refused to read my palm. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> Even refunded my money. But it's all part of the act, don't you see? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Huh? If that fellow gave up two dollars, he must know something. He knows there's one born every minute, that's all. <laughs> Good night, Peavy. And thanks for cheering me up. 
Yeah, bushwalk. All right, Leroy, you've been stalling around long enough. Now go to bed. I'm not stalling, Uncle. I was just putting my books together neatly so I can find them in the morning. Very laudable, but these inspirations have got to strike you earlier, my boy. Now beat it. Okay. And that doesn't mean reading in bed for an hour either. Lights out. Gosh, why did you have to think of that? Huh? Okay, Uncle. Good night. See you in the morning. Yes, sir. Doorbell. I'll go on. Leroy, I'm perfectly capable of answering Hello, my... Leroy. Quite a while. Leroy? Uh, yes. Run along, Leroy. Ralph Martin, it's happened. What's happened, Leela? The money. I got a wire. Some old stock that Beauregard left me. It's suddenly worth goodness knows how much. What? You see, everything's worked out just like Mr. Sartori has said. Isn't it thrilling? Ralph Martin, aren't you going to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> Leela, I don't feel very good. Leroy, don't leave me. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a moment. A little while ago, I was talking about the hurry-up breakfast many of us have on work days. Now, I think it's equally true that we try to enjoy a leisurely breakfast on Sunday. Most of us want something a little different for Sunday breakfast, such as pancakes, waffles, French toast, or hot breads. And to make these good foods really hit the spot, I'd like to recommend that you try spreading them with parquet margarine. Here's a spread that millions prefer for its fresh, sweet flavor. And on hot foods, parquet margarine really proves why it's still unmatched for flavor. Another wonderful thing about parquet is that you can enjoy this fine-flavored margarine for only about half the price of costly spreads. Try it soon. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, the quality spread for bread made by the Kraft Foods Company. <laughs> Of course, it's probably just a coincidence. But anyway, Leela, what the heck? We all got to go sometime. Here today and gone tomorrow. What I say is, if you've only got a short time to live, you might as well make the most of it. Mm, I think you're right, Rockmore. Yes, sir. Loaf of bread, a jug of wine, and thou. Eat, drink, and be merry. Hey, hey. Hey, Leela? That's right. Leela, would you go to church with me tomorrow? <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Now a parting reminder. Don't forget to buy those delicious prepared mustards in Kraft's famous line of quality foods. First, there's a tangy, golden Kraft salad mustard, the one that adds such flavor zest to salad dressings, gravies, barbecue sauce, and cooked egg and cheese dishes. Second, there's a sharper variety, Kraft mustard with nippy horseradish added for zipping up the flavor of frankfurters and for blending into tasty sauces for fish. Buy both kinds and please the whole family. Ask for Kraft horseradish mustard and Kraft salad mustard. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.